in the name of God, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Welcome to Islam for Dummies. The step-by-step -step guide to seeing how ridiculous attacks against Islam really are. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. There's a lot of Christian preachers who make derogatory claims about whether the Quran is a sacred book. As an example, Terry Jones made these statements when he wanted to burn Qur'ans. Islam is of the devil. Why would you want to do this to 1.5 billion people by burning their most sacred book? Well, for one thing for us, the book is not, not sacred. So according to them, it's not a sacred book. So what we're going to do today is we're going to find a test of sacred scripture from the Bible and see if the Bible can pass that test. You see, the Quran recognizes that the original Torah and the original Gospel are sacred books, but these books have been corrupted. And the Bible itself testifies to this fact. How can you say, We are wise and the law of the Lord is with us. But behold, the lying pen of the scribes has made it into a lie. Now we'll examine the Bible's test for sacred scripture. Dr. Shorosh began at the beginning of this rebuttal of his with a verse from the Bible, 2 Timothy 3.16. He quoted, he said, all scripture is given by inspiration and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, corrections, and instructions unto righteousness. It's a beautiful test, which from that he concludes that all scripture, meaning the Bible, is based on these four tests. If it is a word of God, it must prove one of these four points. Anything, if it is from God, it must serve some purpose. It's not for your entertainment. It must be your doctrine, reproof, you do certain things wrong, you'll be punished. Correction, not like this, but like that. And encouraging you to good deeds, instructions and to righteousness. Beautiful, beautiful. Actually, Paul was talking to Timothy about the previous verses in verse 15, talking about the Old Testament. He was not talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, and Peter and James and Jude. But however, if the Christian wants to lump it all together, say so lump it. And now we'll see examples of the Bible failing its own test. Then Samson went to Gaza and he saw a harlot, a whore, a prostitute. And he went in unto her. Full stop. Come on, come on, tell me now. What does it teach you? Samson goes to Gaza and he sees a harlot, a whore, a prostitute, and he goes in unto her. Full stop. Nothing more. There's not a single redeeming word or phrase. Well, maybe this was a Palestinian whore or prostitute. So it means nothing. This was a Palestinian. Maybe if she was an Israeli whore, it might have meant something. She was not an Israeli. So God didn't give him AIDS, he didn't give him VD, didn't give him gonorrhea, nothing, nothing, nothing. This great hero, he went to Gaza and he went in there to her. The more modern Bible, they say, he sw spent a night with her. What, doing what? Hallelujahs. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What were they doing? Spending the night with a prostitute the whole night. What do you do? Hallelujah. <laughs> Look, what is the moral? You see, the Christians, they say the Quran is forged. It is copied from the Jews and the Christians. I am asking, what is there to copy? What have you got that is worth copying? When you go and sleep with your own mother, your own daughter, your own sister, your own daughter-in-law, that is incest. There are 10 cases of incest in this book of God. 10. 
the types and types of incest that you can commit. A textbook, if you want to know what were types. And as a result, in my country, the whites of South Africa, most of them are Christians. 8% of all whites in South Africa, they commit incest with their own daughters. And 13% of the Americans are committing incest with their own daughters. <laughs> Dr. Vernon Jones, a psychologist of great repute, he carried out experiments on groups of school children to whom certain stories were being read. And he said that these stories made certain slight but permanent changes in character. The type of story that you read will create the type of mentality that you have. If you read junky stuff, your mind will become junky. You eat junky food, you will become, your body will become junky. <laughs> Amazing. Out of the 10 cases of incest, Muhammad didn't copy a single one. Then you read, rape. Not only rape, how to rape your own sister if you want to, it's given to you in detail. If you want to rape your own sister. One of the sons of David, he sets you an example. What, what you must do if you want to rape your own sister? Gang rape is there. A son goes and prohibits with 10 of his father's wives, 10 in a row. I'm telling you, this is in the holy book. A Christian lady here in the UK, here in the UK, she wrote a letter, she says, banned in the book. Banned in the Bible. What it has, ban it. But of course, your salvation. <laughs> and Moses said to them, have you kept all the women alive? All the women, you have kept them alive? Now therefore, kill every male among the little ones. Every male child among the little ones of the Palestinians, kill them. And every, kill every woman who has known man intimately. If any woman has ever had sex with a man, kill them also. But keep alive for yourselves, all the young girls, not the little ones. Little ones is a liability. You've got to feed them and bring them up, no time for that. But keep alive for yourselves, the, all the young girls, the Palestinian young girls, who have not known a man intimately. This is the instruction given to Jewish soldiers in the field. Now when they see a young Palestinian girl, how can you verify whether this woman has experienced sex or not? How do you verify? The soldier in the field, he doesn't know about the saliva test. He doesn't know anything about it. The only way is to rape and ravish these Palestinian girls to verify whether a man has been through her or not. And if they discover that she has already been used second hand, chop off her head. If not, keep them. And they saved for themselves 32,000 Palestinian girls whom no man had known. After raping and ravishing them, they saved for themselves 32,000 for themselves. And out of that, the Lord Almighty, God Almighty, must also have his pound of flesh. So it says, and 30 and 2 was for the Lord. I am asking, what does the Lord with do with, what does he do with 32 raped and ravished Palestinian girls? You tell me. In the book of God, God giving instructions that you go along and you verify. God talking this filth and dirt, kill every little child, male and female, kill them all. Only young girls you must keep. And they too, one that know they have not known man sexually. It says here, therefore, David arose and went, he and his men, Dawud alayhi salam, David, and killed 200 Palestinians. And David brought the four skins. You know when you do khatna, circumcision, that skin which you throw away, very valuable. Don't throw it away. It might be used for currency. And they gave them in full count, full count, he counted out. One, two, three, you know like one pound, two pound, three pounds. He counted out 200 cash, cash, four skins to get a wife. A princess, you know, Saul's daughter, Michelle, he paid out in four skins of the Palestinians, was used for currency.
Samson goes to Gaza and he sees a harlot and he goes into her. This is supposed to be in the word of God. Now, under the test that is given to us by Dr. Sharosh, where does it fit in? Does it, is that your doctrine? That when you go to some place and you see a prostitute, you go in into her, your doctrine, is that your teaching? Reproof? Was there any reproof given by God Almighty? Say, I'll punish you, I'll put you in hell, nothing. Correction, they said, no, you mustn't do this, but you must marry her, and then you can go in. What? What instruction? Nothing at all. So I'm asking the doctor or any Christian at any time, please, please, read the Bible with this critical eye. There are things there in the Bible you can't fit in anywhere. Genesis chapter 38, you read about Judah, the father of the Jewish race. He has three sons and he gets the eldest son married and he does something that God didn't like, so God killed him. Genesis chapter 38. Ask the Christian, where does it fit in? He says, reproof, which is correct. God told him not to do certain thing and he did it, so God killed him. So now, Judah tells his second son, Onan, you go in unto your brother's wife, according to a Jewish custom, and beget a child by her, so that the name of the deceased might carry on. This guy, Onan, he goes unto his brother's wife, trying to fulfill his duty, but at the critical moment, the jealousy enters his heart. He says, look, the seed is mine, but the name will be my brother's. So he spills it on the ground. I'm reading the Bible. He spilled it on the ground, so God killed him also. Where does that fit in? Reproof. So look, this is your custom. You are supposed to do certain duty. You perform. You don't, God kills you also. Now the old man sends his daughter-in-law. The old man sends his daughter-in-law back to her father's house, telling her that the next time the third fellow is grown up, I will call you. But conveniently he forgets. Conveniently. So the woman wants to take revenge. So she gets the news that her father-in-law is going to Timnat. I'm reading the book of Genesis, chapter 38. He's going to Timnat to share his sheep. So she goes and sits by the, way, by the wayside and covers her face. The old man passing by, he sees this woman and he's game. He's game. So he comes to her, I'm reading the Holy Bible. He says, allow me to come in unto thee. What Samson did to in Gaza, same thing, let me do to you. So she says, I'm reading the Holy Bible. What will thou give me? So he said, I'll give you a kid from the flock. So she says, what guarantee that thou will give it? He said, what guarantee do you want? He said, your signet, your ring, and your bracelet, and your staff. So the old man gave it to her, and he cohibited with his daughter-in-law by the roadside, and made her pregnant. Twins, twins, straight away, one hit, twins. And these twins are Fares and Zara, who are the great-grandfathers of Jesus Christ, according to the genealogy. Children of incest are the great-grandfathers of Jesus. Now I'm asking, in this test that you gave, beautiful test, 2 Timothy 3.16, doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction unto righteousness. I'm asking, where does this fit in? Into the book of God. Tell me. And if you can't fit in anywhere, then it fits into pornography. Pornography. Now these were just a few examples of unholy content in the Holy Bible. And they want to say the Qur'an isn't sacred. Mr. Didat, what do we say to this? You are, you know, look, Jesus told you, he warned you. He said, judge not that he be not judged. For with what judgment he judge, he shall be judged. He said, you hypocrite, why seest thou the mote in thy brother's eyes and seest not the beam in thy own eye? So first remove the beam from your own eye. So preachers, before you attack the Qur'an about anything, you better check the Bible first, or you're really going to get laughed at. We sincerely hope you enjoyed this episode of Islam for Dummies, and we hope to see you again next time.